I have in the past completed a beginner's guide to CO2 pistols, which are as varied as they are numerous. Well, finally, I found the time to put together a beginner's guide that is just as important. The beginner's guide to CO2 rifles. <laughs> and welcome to AAR On Air. Today it's the turn of the CO2 rifle. This is another big project to try and help people understand what the fuss is all about around these guns. And I will probably explain why a lot of people start with these when entering the sport. I'll be looking at the different types, uses, loading and gassing methods, extras, tuning, costs, maintenance, ammunition, and just how much fun you can have with these. Before I start, I must point out this is mainly aimed at newcomers to the world of air guns, but with the hope that some old hands can still enjoy and maybe learn a thing or two from it as well. Now, there is a heck of a lot to get through, so here goes. What is a CO2 rifle? Well, it's basically an air-powered rifle powered by carbon dioxide, which is supplied in many different forms, starting with the familiar 12-gram CO2 cartridge which has similar siblings in the form of soda siphons, emergency life jackets, tyre inflators, etc. But there is no threaded end on these, and of course this is carbon dioxide, so in most cases they're not interchangeable with other products. They work by fitting these into a gun which pierces them when tightened up. The gas is then released in measured amounts when you pull the trigger, sending the pellet or ball bearing down the barrel towards the intended target. How fast? Well, that is determined by many factors, including primarily how much gas is released when you pull the trigger. This amount is usually set by the factory when the gun is made, but often can be adjusted to suit the individual. But be careful to make sure it doesn't produce more power than is legally allowed in your area. Police forces don't take kindly to that. But of course, the more air released each time means more power potentially, but the, the trade-off is fewer shots from each capsule. There are many more options and sizes of CO2 cartridges. Firstly, the dual method. This can be back-to-back, -back, as in this or side by side in this M4 type replica. It should be pointed out this doesn't normally mean more power but simply more shots and is usually a method used on guns likely to use more shots per session or guns with a blowback type action where a lot of air can be wasted giving the feel of recoil. The other option is to use a larger capsule to supply a higher reserve of air. This normally takes the form of an 88 gram item which naturally does supply a greater reserve of air, but it's heavier and bulkier and naturally more expensive. These are screw fitting heads rather than a clamp in method to pierce the capsule, but that doesn't mean these can be removed once fitted because it still pierces the end and removing it would result in losing all the air from them. The issue can be that sometimes these will also leak air slowly if left in the gun unused for long periods of time. And then when you return to use it, you find the capsule has emptied itself. This then becomes an expensive pastime. So some guns can take an adapter, which allows you to use 12 gram CO2s that will then fit into the adapter and into an 88 gram fitting gun. Meaning, if you don't use it for some period of time, the potential loss of air is only a fraction of the cost of an 88 gram cylinder. 
Of course, the adapter itself isn't a cheap item, so you will need to weigh up the options that suit your needs. So, loading these up with air is a relatively simple process, but it does have its downsides. As we've already stated, these can leak if left over time. They aren't cheap either, if you buy them singularly, that is. Or if you buy the larger 88 grams, which are also expensive. So my advice here is buy in bulk. It can reduce the price greatly. Another downside is temperature. The power levels from these is greatly affected by variations in temperature. If it is cold, then the power level drops considerably. I have tested this on many occasions by putting them in the fridge overnight and then shooting them or heating them with a hairdryer before shooting. And the difference is very noticeable. So on a cold day, keep them in your pocket until you're ready to shoot. What about ammunition then? Well, here again, the choice is huge and can be linked to the use of the gun. Fun guns often use BBs or ball bearings because they are easy to make and hence cheap to buy. So it makes the whole process more affordable to the shooter. It also means the barrel is usually smooth internally, as opposed to having a rifling inside, which is essentially a machining process that then spins the projectile as it is fired down the barrel. This spinning then continues after it leaves the gun and helps it maintain a straighter line and adds to the gun's overall accuracy. BBs don't normally have this because the steel of the projectile will wear and damage the barrel and over time ruin the gun's accuracy potential. So, smoothbore barrels for BBs, which means they aren't as accurate and hence not really suitable for any real target work or indeed hunting. BBs themselves come in all different styles and materials. The issue here is steel BBs have a tendency to ricochet off targets and can be potentially dangerous. So there are lead versions which have a tendency to deform when they hit a target, losing a high amount of the energy and reducing the chance of any ricocheting. There are copper coated versions, etc., all trying to reduce the ricochet. Naturally, the fancier you get, the more expensive they become. There is even a version that is designed to disintegrate on impact with the target and simply become dust, hence the name Dust Devils. Now, these don't suit all guns and can even disintegrate inside the gun on odd occasions, leaving a mess at best and a potential repair cost at worst. Pellets, on the other hand, are made predominantly from softer lead and shape themselves to a rifled barrel and spin nicely, making them much more accurate. They're also available in all different weights, sizes, calibers, designs and styles to suit all possible needs, from target work to distant work and penetrating hunting type pellets. The variations seem endless, but be warned, there are a lot of them out there that are pretty fancy looking, but also pretty useless too. You can also have pellets made out of other materials, including lightweight aluminium, helping to get higher speeds from your gun. Note I said higher speeds and not higher power, because Powering guns is not just about speed, it is also about the weight of the projectile too. The calculation for this is pretty complex, but it is a combination of speed and weight that calculates the energy that is measured in either foot-pounds or the metric version, which is joules. There are loads of calculators online that will do the hard maths for you, but you will need to know the speed of the projectile and this is done with the aid of a chronograph. This is really only important to a beginner if you start tuning the gun and run the risk of overpowering it for the laws of your land. Otherwise, the gun will be set from the factory and you won't need to worry about it. So we've looked at ammunition, but how do you load this into the guns? Well, there are loads of different methods and here are a few. Starting with a very simple single shot option where the pellet in this case is placed onto a tray. 
then pushed into the barrel with the bolt action itself and then shot individually. You could of course have a gun with a simple rotating magazine in which you load several pellets and then via the bolt action the gun loads them individually for you from the magazine. Here is an example of loading a rotating magazine. You could be using a replica gun in which the ammunition is loaded into an upright magazine type and the trigger or the blowback action of the gun loads the next shot from the magazine. Here's an example of that. This is normally a BB type gun rather than a pellet type though. Then of course there's the individual cartridge type which add a level of realism. And in the case of the underlever an immense amount of fun too. As the lever action ejects the used pellet shell holder and puts the next one loaded into the chamber ready to shoot. Just like the rear firearms version would do. Like I said, great fun and of course once you've found all the empty cartridges you simply load them up again and off you go. Some countries are allowed to have guns which are known as fully automatic which means you pull the trigger once and the gun will keep shooting until the magazine is empty great fun and has a tendency to use a lot of gas and of course ammunition in a very short space of time. Sadly these are not legal here in the UK. Now let's look at sighting options shall we? You see with pistol it usually takes the form of open sights which can often be fixed and not adjustable which is usually not too much of an issue because you're shooting over shorter distances. With a rifle though you can be shooting over longer distances and open sights that are non-adjustable are not as effective or useful. So what options do you have? Well if your gun is fitted with rails either on top or on the underside or side you can fit such as a red dot which is a small battery powered item that when you look through the glass has a red dot hologrammatically over the target. This can be adjusted to make sure it is consistent and perfectly lined up with your gun. It's quite discreet and very effective over shorter distances and requires no focusing. You could use a laser that has a beam going from the gun onto the target itself rather than as a hologram such as the red dot. Again these can be adjusted to perfectly align with your gun. Both of these two methods have no form of magnification so are not as useful over longer distances. Certainly if it's accuracy over distances you want. You're going to need a scope or telescopic sight. This again is fitted to a rail on the gun and will magnify the target and allow you to adjust the crosshairs again to align itself to where your gun is aiming. This method is probably the most accurate with practice. There are even night vision scopes available but these are very expensive and not normally used on CO2 guns from a cost point alone. Next let's look at the different types of guns there are available in CO2 form. Just a quick note that this isn't a full review of the following guns but these have all been reviewed and full facts and details are available on the AAR on a YouTube channel. The CO2 guns can be used in most shooting disciplines from plinking to hunting and takedown styles to replicas. My first example has to be a bit of an all-rounder. This has been around since the dinosaurs walked the earth, or so it seems. It is a budget end gun that was and still is available in a pistol form as well. But this is the rifle version and as such has a higher power level than the pistol. 
It is single shot and this one is the slightly higher .22 calibre and can be pretty much used for all different disciplines, so to speak. It is often affectionately referred to as the rat catcher, giving a hint as to what its main use is. It is very capable, hugely tunable and customisable and I will look at tuning etc later. It does have a modern equivalent these days, which has improved upon it in many ways. This little number can be a rifle and a pistol and is also single shot or multi shot with its own magazines and comes with a silencer, different length barrels, detachable stock, again very lightweight and great for lots of different uses, especially as a lightweight small vermin tool. You can look towards a more traditional style of rifle with a wooden stock, again multi-shot and very capable. If you prefer a more modern look then there is this, which again comes as a complete kit with scope, bipod, silencer, or moderator, pellets and even targets to get you started. This one does take the larger 88 grams cartridge and is a more complete kit and as such is probably one of the most expensive ones here. But it does start to feel like it's a bigger, heavier rifle. One area that CO2 powered guns lend themselves to is the replica market. There have been countless famous guns in history, including modern history. And much like the pistol market, the rifle market is no different. There are so many different types, there is usually one to suit everyone's favourite time in gun history. There are so many it would be impossible for me to show you all of them, so I have a selection here that I have reviewed to show you what I mean. The classic has to be the cowboy style underlever or Winchester type. I have two of them here, both pellet firing, but there are lots of different styles of these available. This one is known as the Wells Fargo and is wood and brass with an eight round magazine that fits neatly into the side and uses either the 88 gram CO2 or we'll take the adapter that we looked at earlier. Then there's the shell ejecting type, which gives that added realism. Neither of these are any good for any form of hunting. It's more an ownership thing, and these are very collectible and great plinking fun for all the family. If it's a more modern military style you want, then there are several, including this, which is probably one of the better ones and has a very authentic feel to it with heavyweight dropout magazine firing BBs and uses double CO2 arrangement to keep the fun going for longer. It has a blowback action for realis realism with accessory rails all over to customise it if you wanted to. As I said before, all of these rifles shown have been reviewed in full and can be seen on the channel if you want to know more. I said I would have a look at tuning. I'm not going to show you specific tuning, that is going to be on another programme, but let's just have a walk through what you can do if you grow into this sport. This again is the Crossman 2250 for example that we looked at earlier. It has to be one of the most customised guns out there. It's cheap to buy and pretty cheap to tune and customise, with loads of companies able to supply parts to do this. You can change the stock, the grips, the bolt on the action, adapt it to become multi-shot rather than single shot, add scopes to it or red dots, silencers are available etc. To tune it there are some very quick fixes to achieve this. You could change the barrel and put a longer barrel on it. Putting it simply, the longer a pellet travels down the barrel with air pushing it, the faster it travels and the more energy it carries. 
The trick is also to keep the air behind a pellet and not let it seep out anywhere. So changing the block for a machined metal one will again make it more efficient rather than the original supplied plastic item. And of course, change the hammer spring inside, which again releases more air, helping the pellet travel at greater velocities. This one has a power adjuster on the back, and we'll be having all the other items added in a later video. The final thing to look at is care and maintenance. Here, common sense plays a big part because the barrel and most of the other parts on these are metal and you need to keep them clean, dry and ideally oiled, usually simply by wiping down with a lightly oiled rag. Another point is when you fit the CO2s, use a drop of silicon oil on the tip of the CO2 to help it keep the seals in good order. Don't leave the gun in damp places and a good quality bag helps to protect them from knocks and the like. Clean the barrels from time to time with either a cleaning kit or shoot through type cleaners. A full video on this has been completed as well. And do keep them out of the reach of children etc. They are still a weapon and as such can do some damage. Ideally, keep them in a gun cabinet or certainly a locked cupboard. Hopefully you found this to be useful and it has interested you enough to get into the sport. If you have enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe because there are lots of reviews and tips on the channel and these are released every Friday. But for now, thank you for watching, stay safe and hope to see you next time.